we have a simple construction program created using a .csv file in Microsoft Excel. As we can see, we have a column for a unique identifier or reference, we have an item title or description, we have a planned start date, and subsequently a planned end date, and finally we have a descriptor for the type of task, whether it is construction, demolition, or temporary works. Here, we have a Navisworks.nwf file containing various models created using either Civil 3D or Revit. Before model federation has occurred, we have exported and converted the files to a .nwc file format. To link the construction program we've created in Microsoft Excel, we need to go to the Timeliner tool found under the Home tab on the ribbon. From here, we need to navigate to the Data Sources tab inside the Timeliner dialog box. Here, we can select the Add drop-down menu. As you can see, we can import files from various sources ranging from Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Project, and Primavera. For our example, we're going to select the CSV import tool. In the open dialog box, we can simply navigate to where our .csv file is stored. By using the Autodesk Desktop Connector, we can host and access files created using the Microsoft Office Suite stored in the BIM 360 Cloud. Once opened, we need to map our spreadsheet columns to the data required by the Navisworks Timeliner. We're going to keep the row 1 contains headings option ticked, as this means it won't use the information contained in the first row of our Excel spreadsheet, as this contains the title. Next, under the external field name column, is a series of drop-downs containing the information entered in row 1 of our Excel spreadsheet. Here, we simply need to ensure the correct data is mapped between Navisworks and Excel. Not all columns need to be mapped. If a column must be mapped, Navisworks will prompt the user to say there is missing data. Once satisfied the data has been mapped correctly, click OK to close the Field Selector dialog box. Now, let's return to the Timeliner. We can see our data source is available inside of Navisworks. We now need to ensure our data is brought into the Navisworks model. To do this, right-click the imported data source and select Rebuild Task Hierarchy. Now, when we go back to the Tasks tab under the Timeliner dialog box, we can see Navisworks has brought in our program data mapped correctly to the Timeliner tool. Depending on what phase of the project we're at, whether it be conceptual design, detailed design, or the construction stage, Navisworks allows us to display various data aligned to the project needs or pertinent phase. We do this by going to the Timeliner, selecting the Tasks tab, and navigating to the Choose Columns option. For this example, I want to display the reference given to the task description. To do this, I'm going to ensure the Display ID column has been selected. I also want to display this column before the name, so I'm going to use the Move Up button to bring the ID column forward. Now we can see our reference data supplied in the Excel spreadsheet is listed inside our Navisworks Timeliner. As we've connected a .csv file to Navisworks, we have the ability to amend the data inside the Excel spreadsheet and automatically update the information inside the Timeliner. In this example, we're going to amend the start date of the first task to begin a week later. We do this by first amending the data contained in our Excel spreadsheet and then saving the file. We can then return to our Navisworks model. By going to the Data Sources tab inside the Timeliner menu, right-clicking our Data Source file and selecting Synchronize, Navisworks will update the Timeliner information to that contained in the Excel spreadsheet. 
Being able to connect models to various data sources in a seamless fashion really helps to provide efficiencies when inside the production phases on a project. It is important to point out that this is a one-way workflow. If data is to be amended inside the timeline or once connected to an external data source, such as a CSV file, it must be the data source file that is amended, not by manually changing the data inside of Navisworks. Finally, we are able to add custom data to our timeliner inside of Navisworks to suit our project requirements. In this example, I'm going to include a responsible party tasked with carrying out the construction of each phase. We do this by firstly amending our Excel spreadsheet to include an additional column of data. Back inside of Navisworks, we need to return to the Data Sources tab and edit the column mappings by right-clicking on the Data Source file and selecting Edit. Here, we can map the User 1 data inside of Navisworks to the responsible column hosted in our Excel spreadsheet. If we then navigate to the Tasks tab, we now need to enable the User 1 column to be seen inside our Timeliner, just like we did with the Display ID column. We can then move this up to where we want to view it inside of the Timeliner. The user1 column appears to be blank, so we simply need to return to the Data Sources tab and synchronise the two files once again. When we return to the Tasks tab, we can see our user1 column has now been populated with the responsible party for the task. This allows us to seamlessly add lots of additional data to our Timeliner, including items such as a classification code pertinent to the type of task or activity to be undertaken.